Right. Welcome to the finale, the big finale. Um, today is day five of our program, and it's the last day, the last day for a Zoom meeting. Uh, we will give you some time to finalize your assignment. All right. So what is on the agenda for today? Today, uh, I would like to just very quickly go over tutorial number four. I'm not going to lecture. I'm just going to touch on a few points. I'm hoping we can have some volunteers who will show us what OER they have developed. Uh, it doesn't have to be in the repository yet, but uh, if you can show us what you've done. So uh, if you'd like to volunteer, you can uh, either put your hand up or say in the chat that you're keen to take the floor and you will share your screen and you can explain to us um, your design. That would be very nice. So I'm looking for volunteers. So please uh, think about that. Um, I do have a few from the other groups, which I would like to demonstrate to you and show you. Um, and then I also just want to make sure that everyone is very clear about the final assignment and um, what your deadlines are, etc. All right, so that's the little agenda for today. Um, the All right, so let's um, have a very quick look at last night's homework. Uh, so it was the fin final tutorial. If you go into here, then um, there were two options about how to now share your resources with a much wider audience. All right. So the first one was on the EduConnect portal, which is a national portal. The Zimbabwean Ministry of Primary and Secondary Education's little OER bank. And the idea was to provide you with access. So uh, yesterday I did demonstrate how to create your account, but just to very quickly remind you, there's a sign up button here. You can create an account pretty simply. You do need to have an email, an active email address, and uh, because the confirmation will be sent to the email. All right. However, once it's all up and running, then you can sign in. Sorry, sorry. Give me a second. There we go. All right, so once you are in, then um, you should see your name appear here. I've even put my little my little icon in there as well. Uh, if you want, you can check what resources you've uploaded, etc. But you, before you can upload, then you must have created your little account. All right, then you come to submit a resource, and it's pretty straightforward. Do you remember from yesterday? Uh, resource title, put in the author, put in a publisher. Most people are putting in Mopsie. Choose uh, uh, education level, grade one, grade two, et cetera. What is your subject? What is your topic? And please pull the topic from the curriculum so that it links nicely. All right. Little description about what it's for and what it does. What is it? I want you all to choose teaching and learning resources and then the license. Make sure the license that you choose is the same as the license that you've put on the actual resource itself. Okay, they must correspond. And uh, what is the format? You might remember yesterday I showed you very quickly that if you're going to upload a digital file, you can choose audio, document, or video. But if it is a um, a hyperlink, if it is a web address, maybe you've already uploaded your video to YouTube, for example, which is a good practice, then you would provide us with the hyperlink. So according to what you choose is to um, how you do the upload. All right, once you are in position, then you can push submit a resource. What happens is that um, you will get a little notice saying that the resource has been submitted for review. And that is because the ministry wants to approve the resources before it puts them into the database. All right. So that's as far as you can take it. And then I'd like you to copy and paste the screen capture into the WhatsApp group so that I can make a record of which resources I need to go and have a look at. All right. So that um, was yesterday's. Um, I see someone's got carried away here. I'll just rub these out. Um, that is yesterday's homework uh, so for the EduConnect, but there is another one. So if you feel, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to share with my colleagues, but um, I also would like to upload to um, OER Commons. 
if we go to oercommons.org. Now, this one is a bit different because this is a global repository, meaning people from around the world will be able to access your OER. All right. Um, we showed you in the uh, on tutorial number two, when you're searching for OERs, how to use this little um, search tool on the front page. But if you are going to, oh, all my things have come out. If you are now going to upload your resource in OER Commons, then there's a catch, all right? Then they, although they are, they're not technically a repository, all right? A repository is like a database. So really what these guys are doing is they are indexing where OERs are, which means there's an additional step, all right? You've got to find a home for it first, all right? Somewhere on the web where you can then put your resource so the little video in our um, tutorial here under oer commons uh, explains the process that you have to go through right uh, how to index your open resources on oer commons and the extra step is to actually use your google account all right so i'm going to very quickly show you that um, if you go to um to google here you are here's your normal um google interface and you'll notice that if you have a gmail account you can log in using your gmail account so here's my google account all right um, let me just show you that i'll except i hope i can remember it um sign out all right so there's a sign in button so when you sign in you can choose which account um uh, you want to sign in as that and my little guys there all right so now say for example you've created a powerpoint then you want to put it somewhere so the best place to put it is in your drive okay in your google drive and when you click through here you can go new and then upload a new resource all right so the nice thing is then you can now um uh, if you say for example i wanted to share this resource as my oer a resource there is a get link button, get a link, all right? And you'll see here, um, it says, can anyone with the link uh, access the resource? Or you can say, um, no, normally I would like it restricted, but that's not what we want. If we're gonna want the world to come and have a look at your resource, you need to say anyone with the link. Let's just mute a few people. Go. All right. So then you'd copy the link here and then you'd go back to OER Commons where you need to be logged in. And then you can say, all right, let me just uh, go into my account. So I've gone into my items and you see there's this button that says contribute to the OER Commons. Submit from the web. So if you've got the link from your G, G Drive, then you can just click on there. And now the first thing it asks for is what is the link? All right. And then it's very similar to EduConnect. You just go through the steps and you fill in the metadata or the descriptive words. And then again, they also check it before they publish it to the index. So um, it takes a day, about a day. Admittedly, they don't really worry too much about the, uh, the content. They're more worried, is it a piece of rubbish, a bit of spam? or is it a quality resource? So they're looking at a very general level for quality. All right, um, so once you do that, you click on continue. Um, oh, it's already, I, I've already shared that one once before. So that's why it's not allowing me to use that one, but that's the, um, um, uh, that is the process. All right, we won't go through step by step. I think that's enough. You've got the idea. Uh, all right, and then um, there's a little section on evaluate OER. So we asked you last night to start thinking about what makes a good resource. So there are some uh, uh, criteria here. We'd like you to have a look at that. And then, um, so what else is there besides OERs? And then I remember right at the beginning in my introduction, I said OERs are really building blocks for a much bigger thing called open education. So here we introduce uh, some other um, open content. We've got open courseware. There's your OERs. 
But there's also at the moment a big thing called MOOCs, massive open online courses. These are free courses being offered by top universities uh, to people around the world uh, for free. Um, maybe you're interested in some of those. So there's a little introduction to Beyond OER here. And then that was the, that was it. That was all it covered uh, last night. So now you've done quite a bit. You've done tutorial number one, which was what are OERs and what is Creative Commons licensing. You looked at tutorial number two, how do you find these OERs? Uh, and number three was how do you adapt and create your own OERs? And then also how do you license using the Creative Commons system? And then last night was how do you share your OERs? So we looked at EduConnect and we looked at OER Commons. So by now you are an expert in theory. All right, so that's why we want you now to uh, start thinking about the final assignment. We want proof now that you are an expert. And it's not about knowing stuff, it's about doing stuff. So here is our assignment. <coughs> I'll put it up again. I did mention it yesterday, but I'll do it again. And it's in the WhatsApp. All right, so the idea then is what do you have to do? You have to create or adapt to resources which you can offer to your Zimbabwe colleagues and potentially to people around the world, uh, uh, which they can use in their teaching and students can use in their learning. All right. We said <coughs> it must be aligned to the MOPSI curriculum statements. So somewhere in there we want to see when would you use this resource? How, where, where does it fit in the curriculum? We also want you to have a Creative Commons license plate. All right, so remember yesterday we are in the uh, in the Zoom and in the tutorial, we made you go through, uh, showed you how to uh, generate your own Creative Commons license. So we want you to do that. And then we want you to upload into the EduConnect database. All right, so there are four steps. And um, so it's one thing to know about OERs, it's another thing to actually be able to create your own um, OERs. Now, if you remember, our course is called Developing Learning Materials Using Open Educational Resources. So to be honest, the theory is all very nice and proper, but unless you can actually develop, then you have not achieved the course outcomes. So yes, Lovemore was doing a, um, an attendance check. He made you put R's in the in the in the WhatsApp group, and so that's all. That's very important. We need that for the funders and all that type of thing. But in terms of us proving that you are now a developer, it's it's of no use. All right. The proof of the pudding is whether you upload your resource into the database correctly. All right. So that's what we're wanting. Then here are the criteria. Um, we want you to adapt or create two or you can do more but you've got to have at least two quality quality teaching resources so for number one uh, that those are the things we're looking at have you already adapted i tell you in, in the other groups some people are just uploading the curriculum stuff they've done nothing they've done nothing so they're getting zero on this one all right you have to demonstrate that you've either adapted something or you have created new. Don't just give me some curriculum stuff. Okay, we will shoot you down. All right, there are up to two marks for that. Also, on the actual resource, you need to show us that it's linked to the curriculum. All right, we want to see when would you use this in your teaching? All right, so you say this is for grade two. It is in the section maths and science, and it fits in with the section on the, and give us the topic. All right, so, and if you're really good, you tell us what the specific objective is. All right, so uh, there's up to two marks for that. Then we wanna see your Creative Commons license. Where is it? There must be somewhere in the resource so people will know that um, CC by SA or CC by NC and D or whatever you choose, you can choose whatever you like, but you've got to put it in there. It's got to be appeared there, all right? And then you've got to upload it into EduConnect. Word of warning, EduConnect is a real frustration. It's not a particularly user-friendly environment, 
my groups one, two, and three have fought it and fought and fought and fought, but they have persevered. We've now got 150 resources in the in the um, in the uh, repository, and you're going to have to do the same. All right. So give yourself plenty of time. All right, and then try and do it ideally when connectivity is quiet. All right. So um, please don't just say, "Oh, I can't do it." That's not going to work. You have to persevere. You've got to really, really try. And my groups one, two, and three have done a sterling job at, at sticking to task. All right. And then group four must do the same. All right. And there are four marks for that one. All right. You, if you want to get the little, um, the little um, nod from me saying, well done, and your little certificate, then you must make sure that you get at least five out of 10 for this assignment. All right. There we go. Okay. So let me just show you. Well, we've got a few minutes still. So let me just show you what's been done by other people. Are there any volunteers? If you have a look in the chat. All right. Can you, if you've got people here who are already proud of their OER and would like to show it, please, 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 we'd love to see it. So uh, either put up your hand or say in the chat that you volunteer. While we're waiting for volunteers, let me just show you what others have done. And you'll see that some of them are fantastic. Some of them people are really going to town. Uh, where's my folder? Here it is. So my first one I want to show you is this one. Uh, today we are looking at geometry. Uh, reference number seven eight on the Zimsex syllabus particularly looking at constructions and loci, and we are zeroing in on loci. Uh, the first locus we're looking at is the locus of a point which moves so that it is always a fixed distance from a fixed point. Fixed distance is the lady in red, and the Moving point is the gentleman. The fixed distance is around two meters. The gentleman is moving in such a way that he, he keeps a distance of two meters from the lady. I think it's a bit creepy. The, <laughs> the second locus represents a moving point such that it is equidistant from two fixed points. The first princess to our left, and the second princess to our right. The prince is moving in such a way that he keeps the same distance between them. Can you describe the locus followed by the prince? Locus number three. Is the locus of okay, I think you've got the idea. So what is nice about this resource is that um, they are uh, using people to demonstrate something that could be quite abstract or conceptual. All right. So if you did it on a piece of paper, it would be pretty like, it would lack context. It would just be a, like a mental problem. But here he's made it come alive with all these different demonstrations about what that geometry means in real life. Okay, so that's quite good. I quite like what he's done there. Um, another one, which uh, again, I'm going for, um, I'm going for videos. So by definition. I'm going for videos because um, uh, that's my, my hobby. I love uh, making educational videos. So I've tended to be drawn to those, but keep in mind, you don't have to create a video you can do a powerpoint you can do it could might your powerpoint might be um, a presentation to the class about various aspects of biology or um, our language uh, we did one in mutari where people were uh, uh, putting in the sound the pronunciation of quite difficult terms so you would click on the little section within the powerpoint and then you would hear the audio clip which would tell you what is the correct pronunciation for that term which i thought was very clever all right um uh, so it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be 
a video. It could be an, uh, an annotated or animated PowerPoint. It could be an Excel spreadsheet, which demonstrates various mathematical concepts. It could be a Word document. It might just be a test, all right? It could be a test that you're very proud of and that you don't mind other teachers adapting for their classes. All right, so keep in mind that it doesn't have to be um, a video. Here's, we'll look at Elias's. So we said by definition, isomerism is a phenomenon where molecules have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. Let's take an example of butane, which is C, 4H10. So butane can actually exist one as a straight chain where we have all the four carbons. All right, so he's using a flip chart, something that he's very comfortable with using in order to talk about the various molecular structure of uh, of butane, and he's obviously going to talk about these iso or whatnot, uh, isomerism. Okay, and if we zoom through, the nice thing is later on he shows us a model of what that means in in three D. Actually, to show in models, we are saying we have got four carbons in line, four carbons in line. So this is synonymous to the first uh, show of butane, where we are having the four carbons and the hydrogens are attached respectively. Looking at this, we now have a new generation here of the molecule C4H10, where carbon is attached to carbon number two. So we make our model. So this is where we have three carbons in the stretch chain, and then the fourth carbon is attached to carbon number two. This is now a branched version of butane. So basically- All right, okay. So that is quite a nice little touch, I thought. Um, and how did he do this? He basically got a colleague to, who used their cell phone and they filmed it in one shot. All right, they put the little, um, the little captions on the beginning and at the end. But generally, uh, it's one big shot. But the nice thing is the photographer got in very close. Okay, it's not far away. You can see the model, you can see the chart, and you can hear very clearly what he's describing. So even though the technology is very simple, it's a very powerful little tool. So I like that. All right, and if we go to the end, there we go. There's his little... Um, a creative Commons attribution, CC BY is what he chose, okay? He didn't use the license generator, he just uh, typed it in uh, and uh, added it on. But I think that's lecker, that's really, really nice, very simple, very powerful. And I'll show you one more. Uh, we'll go with this one. Good morning. Today, our topic is water. Water is important in our life. Every day we use water. At home, we use water for bathing. We use water, water for washing. All right, so what is nice about Grace's uh, video is that she's talking to grade twos. All right, so where's the other two videos we're talking to a more mature audience? She is using language and a lot of repetition because for the younger, the younger learners' repetition is good. All right. And then um, let's have a look what she gets up to. In liquid form, water exists in liquid form. As you can see, I am pouring water. So water is liquid. So this is one form of water. Water exists in liquid form. All right. And then she gets on to... Um, some ice form. As you can see, I have some ice blocks with me. This is liquid water, which is frozen. And liquid water, and this is liquid water, which is frozen. We put it in the fridge, then it freezes. So water exists in solid form. This is ice. So water exists. All right. So again, um, 
it's all done in one take. So um, uh, I was the photographer on this one. She she came to me and she said, "Oi, you, you're filming. Grab your grab your phone." And then she had already got everything organized. So she had scripted it. She knew exactly what she wanted to say. She had um, organized. We were at a workshop, so she had organized the hotel staff to get her get, uh, steam and ice and water, and she had everyone running around. Um, and uh, we filmed it in uh, in one shot. Admittedly, it took us three takes. Yet she liked the third one the best. So that's the one that she shares uh, with the world. All right. So if you go into YouTube, you can find her video, etc. She's got a Creative Commons license on the um uh, on the youtube as well all right as, and it's also in uh it's in oeo comments and it's also in educate so it's everywhere this one if you go right to the end you can see there uh there is her little attribution creative commons attribution she's going for cc by to you um and sh shared it out there all right so again uh let me just reiterate you don't have to use um yeah, you don't have to use um, video. Uh, these people just uh, thought that this opened up a whole new avenue. They were using their phones uh, to film, and you can see the quality was actually very good. Um, and you can hear the sound was good. They made sure that the phone was always close to them so that you could hear nice and strong their, their voices. Um, but you could also hear all the, all the funny noises in the background, like... Um, uh, catering staff and so on so but that's kind of adds to the value kind of makes it, it kind of special so um i thought those three three uh, teachers really really did something special all right so um are there any i don't want to have put people off now are there any people who'd like to volunteer and show us their resource oh no i'm scared i've put you off let me just check the chat. Oh, here's the chat. All right. So um, that's fine then. You've, you've got an idea of what's possible. Um, you do have a number of days. We're not expecting it tonight. We are expecting it by Wednesday at five o'clock in the evening. So if you've got a few days now, uh, maybe even the weekend if you're, if you're keen, to plan and to build something that you can share with the world and um, uh, then you've got a few days to upload it into EduConnect. All right, that's enough from me. I've been going a while, even though we did have a technical disruption. I can see Itai is walking around. Uh, he's obviously on his way somewhere special, so we better not take too much time. Uh, any queries, questions about the assignment um, or any of the work that we've covered in the last four tutorials? In that case, I'm going to say thank you very much. This is our last meeting in Zoom. We will stay connected through the WhatsApp for some days to come. But uh, yes, that's the end of our synchronous sessions. And good luck. I hope it goes well. And that is the end of our session. You are free to go.